Yeah, and for some strange reason, I've, just, I've been craving like a popsicle or something. Like, I don't know, it's really weird why I'm... Oh, hey everyone, welcome to church. Let's get started. That is right. So first place, we'll get six points. Second place, we'll get four points. And last place, we'll get two measly pity points. Now, Tyler is in the lead right now <laughs> with 15 points. Both Wesco and San Dimas have 11 points. So there's still an opportunity for them to tie this up. So what we're going to do today is we have eight cups. Two of them are filled up. We're going to take turns one by one, and they're going to each pick a number. We're going to grab that numbered cup, and we're going to throw it in their face. Either it has water or if it doesn't. If it has water, they're out, and if it doesn't, they're still in. So last person standing, last person that doesn't get wet, wins today's game. All right, are you guys ready? Here we go. Let me mix up these cups first to make sure that there's no cheating. I'm looking back here. All right, uh, Tyler, since you are in first place, we're gonna have you go first. Because what happened to the ladies like, first? <laughs> like we went only, first last time. <laughs> it's only fair. Uh, I feel like Julianne's gone first a lot this game. So. Yeah. We will have, all right, I've mixed up the cups now. Okay, uh, is Tyler, it one to 10? One to eight, one to eight. One, oh, one to eight, my right? my left to the right. It's also my left. It's also my left. Okay, yeah, good one. <laughs> I just want to make sure the camera did. One to eight? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go number one. All right, number one. Go ahead and close your eyes. Okay, my eyes are closed. All right, the count of three, this are you ready? This is so nerve wracking. <laughs> I don't like this at all. One, two, three. I don't like it. Can I open my eyes? All right, that's terrifying. Let's go to school. All right, you said yeah. We're gonna go right here. So you said yeah. Pick a number. Um, one through what? Oh, now you got two through eight. Two through eight. Um, let's go seven. Can I keep my eyes open? All right. Yeah. yeah I was scared if my eyes were open. All right, count three. Here you go. Oh my gosh. One, oh. two, three. I was so scared for you, for you. All a right. Little backsplash there for everyone too. All right, now you guys got cups two through six and eight. All right, I'm gonna go with number four. That number has served me well in these games. Number four. Wait, that's four. so true. <laughs> yep. Wasn't that the confetti egg game? Yep. All right, you guys close. My eyes are closed. All right, here we go. On the count of three. One, two. Three. <laughs> that means Rancho is our victor. Guys, tune in next week to see our ceremony as we crown Rancho Cucamonga as our champion. See you guys next time. Do you know what time it is? That's right, it's summertime, and it's time for worship. So jump up on your feet, do some big stretches, make sure you have enough room to dance. Are you guys ready to worship with us? Sounds great, let's go worship together. No matter what I'm gonna face, I'm gonna face tomorrow. Shakes and things break, break You are my rock, my everything
When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, He cares When you seek, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door Don't you love worshiping? So do I. I hope you had an incredible time praising Jesus, and now I'm super excited to learn all about him with you. So grab your Bible, grab a seat, and get ready to learn with us. Hello to everyone at home. It's Pastor Julianne here, and I'm pumped to be here with you today learning all about big faith. Our memory verse for this month is all about you guessed it, big faith. If you know it, go ahead and say it with me. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. Awesome. God's grace is the best gift we could ever get. When we have big faith, we accept that gift and are able to share it with others by living out our lives for Jesus. Last week, we saw how big faith moves us to big actions when we heard about Paul, who preached about Jesus to the Athenians. This week, we get to see how big faith changes the way we see our problems. Paul gets into a hard situation that many of us would say is pretty bad, but his big faith helps him see that it's actually a good thing. Have any of you ever been on a trip? Maybe it's been to somewhere close, or maybe it's been to a different part of the world. But trips are supposed to be relaxing and fun, right? In Acts chapter 27 and 28, we see one of Paul's not so fun trips. Paul is on the run. He's fled the town of Caesarea, but he's being pursued by very powerful people who want to throw Paul in prison or worse. So Paul makes a bold move. He asks for his case to be heard by the most powerful leader in the entire world, Caesar. This was a risky move by Paul. If Caesar heard his case and decided something bad should happen to Paul, then that was it. The decision was final. But Paul had the chance to tell the most powerful leader in the whole world about Jesus. This could be a game changer, and Paul was going to need some big faith. So. Paul was put on a boat as a prisoner under the command of Roman soldiers, and they set sail. And this is where we catch up with Paul in Acts chapter 27. Now, as we go through our story, I want you to imagine what it would be like to be on this boat. Paul and the other sailors are not going to have a fun journey, but it's Paul's big faith that changes the way he sees his problems. Their first stop on the way to Rome was to pass by the island of Cyprus. Now, Paul knew this island, but this time the weather had other plans for them. Let's read. We're going to pick it up in Acts chapter 27, verse 4. It says, From there we put out to sea again and passed to the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. Once they pass Cyprus, they head towards Crete, but the same thing happens. Acts chapter 27, verses 7 and 8 tell us, we made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arri arriving off Nidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salomone. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. So as our ship moves, it gets hit by wind head on in several places. But that's not all that happens. They run into some pretty harsh storms next. Let's read from Acts chapter 27, verses 18 through 20. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither the sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, they finally gave up all hope of being saved. So they move 
the boat out onto the open sea against the warning of Paul. There they encounter hurricane-like winds and it was pitch black in the middle of the storm. They throw the cargo overboard and they give up. Oh, they give up all their hope. This sounds like a terrible boat ride, but Paul has big faith and his big faith changes the way he sees his problems. An angel appears to Paul amidst all this turmoil and tells him that he will make it to Caesar in Rome. The angel also tells Paul that not a single life will be lost on the journey. The boat ends up crashing into a sandbar outside of the island of Malta. Now, normally the Romans would kill all of the prisoners, but this time the commander, Julius, saw something different in Paul, so he stopped the other soldiers from killing any of the prisoners. Paul's big faith changed the way he saw his problems. Paul went on to share about Jesus with the Roman soldiers, the other prisoners, and the people of Malta, and even a ton of people in Rome once they finally made it. Acts chapter 28 verses 30 through 31 says, For two whole years Paul stayed there in his own rented home and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Just because we follow God doesn't mean our journey will be easy or not have any problems. Paul ran into many problems on his trips, but he had big faith, and big faith changes the way we see our problems. Paul saw his problems as a way to share Jesus with even more people than he could have ever imagined. You can do the same as Paul. When you run into problems in life, you can remember that big faith changes the way we see our problems. Then you can look for an opportunity that God is giving you to share about him with the world around you. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that we're learning today. And God, we just pray that you would give us big faith so that we could approach our problems differently, that we would see our problems as an opportunity to tell other people about you. I pray that we'd have the courage to take advantage of those opportunities and knowing that you are gonna be with us every step of the way. We pray all these things in your name, amen. Hey everyone, that was a great, Look, finally, someone gave me a pop school. I have no idea, no idea at all why I would be wanting one of these. But I haven't had one in forever, but today I really, really have been wanting one. Well, I am so glad that someone brought me one and I wish that I could just give back to them, even if it was something small. And God actually tells us to do the same thing. He tells us to give to him back just 10% of what he has given to us so that he can do so many great and powerful things with it. The coolest part is that you can give back to God today by giving online right at your house. So just go talk to your parents and they can actually help you give your offering online today. We love you and we are so pumped to see you guys next time right here. And we wanna send you guys away into the week with one hope and one life in Christ. Bye, everybody. Ugh, we're so good. You got next one.